What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and on today's episode we have another viewer with a question for the Chevy Avalanche. So before we start this video, if you have any questions on your Chevy Avalanche or any other vehicle, please leave it in the comment section below. Leave it on any of my videos. I'll find it and I'll respond to you. Um, this one was like a week ago, so sorry for taking so long. was waiting on someone else to help me, but I guess they didn't have enough time to get to it, so I'm just going to go ahead and answer for you. Also, if you like this video, please make sure you give a thumbs up. That way, the YouTube algorithm can help push my videos up and help my channel soar to greater length because of you. Anyway, let's jump right into the video. So, this question comes from one of my viewers. Her name is Mia Parker, and she has a 2008 Chevy Avalanche LTZ, I believe she said, and I am correct. So her question is, well, she has some questions in the little sentence stuff. So anyway, I have a 2008 LTZ Chevy Avalanche, and it won't start. There are multiple problems that I have. Um, it has uh, leaking, it leaks gas. So she thinks the fuel pump, uh, the fuel tank needs to be replaced. She got it towed to a shop and said that there were some electrical issues with it. Um, that something has to do with the security lock. Uh, starting to be concerned about the cost of all of this. Now, yeah, Mia, the cost is going to go up significantly. One, because you're taking it to a mechanic. And two, it gets expensive with diagnostic fees. Um... Starting to be concerned about the cost of all this. When you have the key, all the lights come on, but no click or crank. My husband changed the starter, and that didn't fix anything. Uh, I love this truck, but the more I read about it, the more I'm seeing that people complain about the electrical issues. So yes, Mia, um, certain trucks, especially the Chevy ones that go up in age, um, I believe after 07 and up, a lot of them do have some electrical issues. Uh, I just think that's just the nature of it. I think they were being made cheaply at that certain time frame. And the more advanced we get in technology, the more cheaper things are getting made. And that's because, let's face it, in this day and age, no one wants anything to last long anymore. Um, it's not like the older vehicles that you can maintain and last forever. Everything is just a quick replace, go, and spend your money because... That's just how the world works. They just want more money eventually, so they give everything a little time span. But um, let, let me see what I can do to help you. Now, we did talk already, and I told you I will have my friend help me make this video. And, well, he couldn't get on it, so we're just going to jump right in for you. You also told me that you would greatly appreciate the video that I'm making, which you are certainly welcome. You told me it was running fine, and it just died out of nowhere. Uh, I got it from a dealer, paid 18000 with interest, and all of that for it to run for one year. I'm so sorry to hear that. Um, I got it in February, and by August, I found out that the gas leak warranty was already up. I don't think there's a warranty for gas leaks, so they probably ripped you off on that. Um, definitely got ripped off, which you already called it. Uh, and never again will I go to a dealership. Luckily, I was able to pay it off in a year. Otherwise, I'd still be making payments for a broken car. A month into having it, the sway bar broke and had to be replaced. I also had to replace a rotor on the front right wheel as well as new brakes. I'm not. I'm trying not to give up on her, but I don't want to keep putting more money into it because issues keep coming up. It ran and drives drove smooth. And... Uh, so when it wouldn't turn on, it was a real shock. Any answers or ideas would be amazing. So Mia, I'm definitely going to help you in this. Let me throw some ideas out there for you. First off, I noticed that you said you replaced one rotor and some brakes. Never do that again. Um, whatever mechanic recommended to do that for you is a very shoddy mechanic. First of all, if you're going to replace, and yes, I'm going to shoot fire at whoever does that. If you're going to replace anything with the brake system, always do it in pairs. Um, now, are you talking about the actual sway bar under the vehicle that broke or sway bar links, like the end links? Um, if those end links broke, usually I replace those in pairs as well. Certain things you're supposed to replace in pairs, that's just me. A lot of people like taking the shortcut route and replacing things one at a time as they break. And that's not great because now everything's uneven. One's going to wear out quicker than the other. And I don't, I don't like... I don't like certain people. I don't like people that do that. I really don't. I think it's the shortcut way. I think it's just them just trying to save money. Now, if you're in a bind and you don't have money, 
and you just needed to get to point A to B real quick until you save up and you can do something, fine. That's totally fine. You do what you gotta do. But when it comes to brakes and stuff like that, changing one rotor, that's just a waste of time in my opinion. Um, changing one set of brakes, that's just a waste of time in my opinion. I hope you change the whole set of brakes. Um, the one rotor, I guess you can get away with that, but I would have recommended either getting both rotors um, cut or getting a pair of new rotors. But we digress, let's get into the actual problem of your vehicle. So I wrote down a few notes here so I don't forget and get off topic. Now, the first thing on your 2008 Chevy Avalanche is you said the gas is leaking. Are you seeing fuel in your driveway? If so, it's probably your tank. Uh, just, just try to see if you can figure out where it's leaking from. Um, you can get a new tank. Usually, I think there are people who can repair plastic tanks. Uh, don't quote me on that. But um, you can always go online and check for a tank. It's cheaper. Or go in the junkyard. It's cheaper. Now, for the starting issue on your vehicle, I would check all the fuses. Go with the cheapest alternative possible. Start by checking all your fuses. Make sure nothing is blown. Make sure everything is all working right. You can tell your husband to look at that because he's the one who changed the starter for you. Um, check your battery. Make sure your battery is new. Make sure there is power in it. If there's not 12.6 volts, you're not going to get a start. Make sure um, that it's fully charged. If you turn on your headlights, look at it. Is it dim or is it bright? If it's bright, battery most likely should be good. If it's dim, you may want to put a charge on that or check to see if it's good. Fuel pumps. Fuel pumps, that's bad. It can cause it not to start. Uh, fuel pumps do wear out. Everything has a lifespan to it. So that is another alternative. When you turn your vehicle to the on position, listen to hear Listen to hear if you can hear the fuel pump priming. If you don't hear a little whirling like fuel pump's probably dead. Um, make sure you check your battery uh, connections, your terminals. Make sure there's no corrosion. Make sure none of the terminals are loose. Um, also, bad ignition switch can cause your vehicle to not start. Um, check your starter connections. Did your husband put the connections on correctly? Just have him verify that it's all put on correctly, everything's tightened down correctly, and just make sure. Also, sometimes you can most possibly have a bad starter again. If you bought a refurbished starter, which in my luck, I've never had luck with refurbished starters. Every time I got one, they always had some issue. Um, either they would ground off and spark and I'm putting it on the right way or they just wouldn't work and then I would have to go back and buy a brand new starter and the truck or vehicle would start right up. Make sure um, you, you get a new starter. For me, I don't like refurbished stuff. Alternator starters, I always have issues with them so I just buy them brand new. Um, bad solenoid, you can have him check out the solenoid, make sure that it is running right to make sure that it's clicking, everything's working. Um, and like I said, again, bad starters. So, those are a little few points that I'd like to touch up on with you. Um, I'm sorry again for having this video out late. It's been a week ago since you left me the message. Mia, please let me know what's going on. Keep me posted. I am going to leave this in the link for you in this comment that you've been watching. So thank you for being a viewer. Um, if you like this video, please hit the like button. Also, Mia, leave me a comment. Let me know what's going on. Have your husband check all these things. We'll keep in touch and we'll try to figure this out to help you get your avalanche started. Anyone else who has any questions, please leave it in the comment section below. If you have any ideas and you want to help Mia out, please leave it under this video. That would be greatly appreciated. And thank you all for watching. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. It'd be greatly appreciated. All of that helps my channel boost up in the YouTube algorithm and helps me grow a bigger following. So thank you all, and I'll see you all soon. Peace.